Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to class. Today is Tuesday, April 21st. We'll start off our lesson, like always, with our phonics, okay? So this week, we'll be focusing on the long vowel E. Let's review all of the long vowel sounds for um, just so that you can remember, okay, and that you don't forget the other long vowels also. And I'll be showing you a very quick video. Now, let's review long vowels. Long vowels say their names, like long A in cake, or long O in rope. Let's listen to long E, cheese. That's it. Now, how about I? What does long I say? Yes, I. Like ice cream. Yum. What's the last vowel? A, E, I, O, and U. Long U says U, like in Q. Okay, so that was a very quick video, okay? Um, the, what we're gonna do today is I want you to look at each picture, okay, that is on this page, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do the first one with you. So, and I want you to say the name of the item in the picture. When you do that, I want you to make sure to pay attention to the long E sound. And you decide whether you hear it or not. This is not a worksheet that I'm gonna give to you to complete, okay? This is just because I want you to say them nice and loud, the name of these um, items, the of the pictures. I want you to say them nice and loud and I want you to pay attention to what you hear. That's very important. So the first one is a leaf. Okay, our video said that the long vowels say their name. So this is a leaf. Do you hear the long E there? Okay, if you do then um, you can give me a thumbs up. I could kind of still see you, okay? So, if you heard a long E in leaf, give me a thumbs up. Oh, you got it right. Good job. And those of you that didn't give me a thumbs up, I could still, I know who you are, okay? So, the second um, picture you're going to do on your own so at this time you're going to actually you're going to do the second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth picture by yourself so you're going to pause the video make sure to say them really loud I'll know if you're not saying them right okay so go ahead and pause now and then you can start it when you're ready All right, good job. I heard you say those words nice and loud. Good job. I am proud of you. So this, ladies and gentlemen and kids from KA, this is called a word search. So I really, really like word searches. Actually, it helped me um, with my spelling when I was a kid, okay? So I'm going to show you how to uh, complete a word search, okay? And then um, I'm only going to do one with you, and you don't have to finish it all today, okay? Um, if you want to, that's fine. Uh, I think we did some word searches 
I think it was before winter break we tried, okay? I don't remember exactly, but let's try it. So this is how you're gonna um, search for the words here in this word search. So I'll help you with this one, with the word three. Okay, three. Now, when you're doing the word search, I want you to try to read the words on your own. If you can't, then that's okay. Ask somebody to help you, but don't ask just because you don't want to try to sound it out or look for it on your own, okay, or try it on your own. Do that first, and then if you can't, you can ask your parents or somebody else. Okay, so the word three. Now, this is how I normally do it when I'm looking for words on word search. I normally pick a line. So today I'm going to pick this bottom line down here. So I normally go through it and look for every T. Oh, here's a T. And then the second letter is an H. Oh, there's no H's around it, so that can't be. All right, keep going, keep going. And then I found another T right here. Oh, but there's no H around it. All right, keep going. Hmm. Oh, here's another T. No H around it. No H, so no, that can't be it. All right, go keep going down the lines. Eh, here's another T. No H around that one either. Darn it. Okay. Oh, here's another T. No H around that one. What? <gasps> here's a T. Look at it. There's an H next to it. Oh, what's the third letter? R. Oh, R. And the last two letters are E and E. Well, there you go. Look at how cute. We did it. Yay. T-H-R-E-E. -E, three. So I highlighted it down here. So that way I know that I found it already. If... You don't want to get confused. You want to make sure that you either highlight the words as you find them or cross them out as you find them, okay? So I hope you like this activity. This one will be in Seesaw waiting for you. Again, don't try to finish it all today, okay? Just, um, you can if you want, but let me know if you, um... Let me know if you like it, okay? Uh, if you like this activity. If you do, I have a ton more. If you don't like it, well, I'm just going to do them at my house because I don't have anything else to do. So that's it. Um, we will be moving along to our reading lesson. Okay, so yesterday you had a mystery reader. What did you think about him? He's all right, huh? He's, well, we'll keep him. We like him. Yeah, we miss him. Yeah, we miss Mr. Martinez. So I'm glad that he got to read to you. He did. He does tell me he misses you guys, um, all of you. And I told him, yeah, I, I miss them too. But I, at least you guys got to see him, right? We got to see him. So we're going to use his story to finish or continue our lesson in order of events. Okay? So we will complete this graphic organizer. That's what this is called. This is called the graphic organizer. Okay, this helps us organize what happened in order of events. So what happened first, next, then, last, which is what we've been um, what we've been focusing on. Okay, so books would ne not always tell you, oh, this is what happened first. 
So sometimes we have to figure that out on our own. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to break everything down so that uh, you could try to better understand the important events that are in the book will tell us what happens in what order they happened, okay? Okay, so today we're only going to identify the major event that happened first. So what you're going to do is you're going to listen to the story only. It's not the whole story, okay? It's I cut up the video so that you could see that the important event that happened first. Now remember the story is about, well the title is the true story of the three little pigs. And it's, it's about the wolf saying that the, all the story that everybody has been talking about and that all the stories we've heard about the three little pigs, that that's not true, that he really didn't go there to eat the little pigs, okay? So let's go ahead and listen to the video and then we can discuss it after. By Lane Smith. Smith. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs. Or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story. Because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf. Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, Folks would probably think you were big and bad, too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in once upon a time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So, I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig. Okay, so let's think about this for a minute, okay? What happened in this little part of the book, in this first part of the book, that is kind of like a big deal? Okay, what event happened here that we could write about that is going to, uh, that's a big deal and that we could, uh, it's going to affect the rest of the story. Okay. Think about it for a little bit. Brainstorm. Okay. So what would you write first? Something very important. Okay. I think that in looking at this video, I think that I saw and heard that first the wolf says uh, he ended up at the little pig's house because 
he needed sugar for his little granny's cake, right? So is that important? Okay, think if you were the wolf and you're trying to tell people, no, I, I promise I didn't want to eat those little porkers. I didn't want to eat those little pigs. So if you're the wolf and you're trying to tell people that it's not true what they're saying, that they're lying, would you think that that's important part of the story? Okay, would it help people believe you if you were the wolf? Okay, yeah, I, I think so. Okay, so if I was the wolf, that's very important part to tell the story. First of all, let me tell you something. I wasn't there to eat those little piggies. I was there because I was trying to be nice and make my granny a cake. And I ran out of sugar, so I wanted to ask the neighbor. Okay, so that's how we're going to um, break apart sequence of events or order of events so that hopefully that helps you see the events and helps you become better at being able to tell what events are important in a story. Okay, so this is classwork. Okay, this was me showing you um, what, what we would write first. So let's write it really quickly, okay? So what happened first? That's very important, okay? I'm getting better at writing with this thing. The wolf Um, was making a making, oh, don't write it ugly like me. The wolf was making a cake. And, and then I'm going to stop there because I'm going to run out of space. And ran out of sugar. So he went to ask his neighbor, the first little pig, if he could borrow some. So that's an important event in the story, right? That's what happened first. All right. So tomorrow what we're going to do is... I'm showing you how to do it today. Tomorrow, we do what happened next. We do it together, okay? You try it on your own, and then um, we'll, we'll discuss it. But after that, you're going to have to do the last two by yourself, okay? So if this still doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. Uh, go back and... And you can listen to the, this part of the lesson as many times as you can or as many times as you want, okay? So that's it for our reading lesson. You can pause the video and resume when you're ready for math. Welcome to math. We, well, before I start, did you like the little song from yesterday? It's super cute, right? If you said no, well, that's okay. You can have your own opinion, but I'm still going to like it. So now we can continue to um, with our math lesson. So we're going to focus on coins. And we're actually going to start combining coins. And we're going to try to count them. So before we start, okay, take some time and pause the video and go try to find a few pennies and nickels. You're only going to need pennies and nickels. So if you have a few laying around, 
don't break a piggy bank or anything like that, okay? If you have a few, then you can grab a few and come back and start the video. If you don't have a few, like sometimes I don't have any any cash, any I don't carry a lot of it. Not a lot of people do anymore. So if you don't have any, that's perfectly fine. Well, you're gonna use mine, okay? You'll use mine. So go get your coins and come back so we can start. Andale, quickly. Okay, so here we go. Now, first things first, let's look at the silver coins that have, mm, I don't remember what president that was. Maybe somebody could tell me. But I know that this coin is five cents. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a number five here and a number five here, okay? The directions tell us that we're gonna find the value of the coins. That means that we're gonna need to count the coins together and write here in this box what we counted. So first, I'm just gonna do five. Oh, that's horrible five. I'm gonna do a five on all the silver coins with Thomas Jefferson on, on his face. I'm not trying to be rude, but I had to write it because we need to count it, we need to remember. So who remembers how to count by fives? You see why we had to learn skip counting by fives? So over here, I'm gonna put five. Oh, let's see if you remember. How's another way that you could, um, what pattern do you see here? If you said that the there's two patterns, you are correct. There's the five patterns, the five and the second digit pattern. Okay, so then it's five, zero, five, zero, five. So if we're following the pattern, what's next? Zero, you're correct. You're so smart, you must have a good teacher. So if it's five zero five zero five zero, it would be five if we're following the pattern. Very good. If you said there's two patterns, you were right. One, the first digit, one, one, two, two. If you're following this same pattern, it's one, one, two, two, then three three oh okay so let's see five ten fifteen twenty twenty five thirty thirty five all right so let's count in the first box five counting by fives what's after this so it, we counted five and then this one is ten so already we have 10 cents right here because there's five pennies in this nickel and there's five pennies in this nickel. So we know that just in the nickels it is 10. How much is a penny worth? Penny is worth one cent. So it's one, one, one. Right? So let's count. One, two, three. So we have a total of three pennies. So if we have 10 cents in nickels, and then we have three pennies. Now, oh, do you remember adding? There you go, you, need to, you needed to have learned adding, which you guys did very good. You were doing first grade addition, so you better not get this wrong. So it's 10 plus three. So it's 10, 11, 12, 13. You see how I just picked up counting 
the next number in ones after 10? So it's 10, 11, 12, 13. So here, my friends, we do have 13 cents. So let's write it in. A one and a three make 13 cents. Okay. We're going to do the second one together. So here, oh, let me erase this before I confuse myself and you guys. Let's erase this one. We're done. Bye. All right. So five, check. Ten, check. Because we have, so far we have, we've counted this one and this one. So now we're going to count this one. So 15, check. So we have 5, 10, 15 cents in nickels. So we make a 15 here. And then how many pennies do we have? How do we count pennies? By ones, right? One and one. So we have two. So 15, 16, 17. So how much do we have there? Well, I already gave you the answer, 17. All right. If you are, if you have your pennies and you've been doing, um, going along with mine, very good, okay? If you don't have pennies and you've been using my pennies, good job. All right. So, this last one, the third box, we only have one nickel. So, it's five. Okay, and we have one, two, three, four, five. Five pennies. So, I'm going to give you a second. And what's five plus five? It's 15? No, of course not. If you said yes, five plus five is 10. Very good. All right, boys and girls. Let's see what we're, we're going to move on to the next page, okay? If you still need time because you were using your coins, then that's why I was kind of doing it slow because I wanted you guys to also try it. You could pause it and try con continue to work with your pennies and your nickels. And then you can join us right now when you're ready, okay? No rush. All right, now it's your turn. Here is where you pause the video, chicos and chicas, and you will count. Okay, you're gonna count these and put your total bump in the box, just like we did right before, okay? I would want you to uh, maybe get a piece of paper and do Add your skip counting by fives, maybe over here on the side, kind of like I had. I don't know. It it helps me when I'm counting coins like this. Let's see. I don't know. Did it help you having the fives on the side? We'll see. So this is not for a grade. This is not um, in Seesaw. This is because uh, this is where I show you, demonstrate, model how to do it. You try it a little bit. If you get it wrong, that's okay. Then tomorrow is when it becomes your turn completely, okay? So we're gonna continue to practice. So pause the video and practice counting. Um, separate the nickels. Remember, nickels equals five cents. There's five pennies. They're all squished in that nickel. 
and when you're ready you could start the video and we will start on social studies welcome to social studies if you listened to yesterday's lesson you found out that social studies is one of my favorite subjects and um but don't tell a lot of people because they they're gonna think that i'm like some people think it's kind of boring but i don't think it's boring i think it's like super fun so don't tell a lot of people it's gonna be our secret okay all right so we'll continue to work on coins and money but the difference in social studies from math is that the coins and the money that we work on the activities also you need to learn that you depending on how much money you have you can buy only certain things with that money right so this is what we'll be doing in social studies let me show you yes we're working with money and coins but we're doing this fun stuff so again today i model it for you tomorrow this will be probably part of your math all right so let's read the directions draw oh you better know this word niños the coins this one you better know too to match the given value so it says it gave you the value yep it sure did because this i did not write this value i did not write this value and i did not write this value so it gave us this in the worksheet so it gave me eight cents so i drew oh hi okay Confession, I really didn't draw these, but I got them in there, right? All right. So let's count to see if this is correct. What? Uh, let me change to a darker color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I did get it correct. That said to draw eight, eight cents and I sure did. For this today's example, I used um, pennies because I didn't want to make it harder because we are barely learning how to combine different coins to make uh, different values, okay? So I said that with eight cents, I could buy a car, just kidding. No, I said I could buy a pencil. Do you think that's correct? Or you think she's she's crazy, this teacher. She can't buy a pencil with eight cents. Well, actually, I I I I am correct. I I believe I'm correct. I don't know. Next time you go to the store, whenever we can go to stores again, then check it out. But I I do think that I could buy a pencil with eight cents. All right, move on to the second box. This value says what? 12 cents. Let's see if I have 12 cents here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Very good, your teacher can count 12 cents. I said, that I could buy one blow pop with 12 cents. Do you think I can? I don't know when I was going to school, that was a long time ago. Um, they used to sell blow pops at my school for like 10 cents. So, I mean, I, I don't know, I think so. All right, so let's move on to the last box. This one is what? Seven cents. Let's see if your teacher can count seven pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yep, 
I, your teacher can count seven cents. I said that I could buy seven uh, bubble gums with seven cents. I don't know when I was in school, I told you it was a long time ago, but I could buy gums for one cent and I think they were these. So I say yes. Okay, what, what would have happened if I would have put a car in, in the 12 cents? Can I buy a car with 12 cents? Not even the little Hot Wheel cars, right? Okay, so this is why it's important to learn how much money or what the value of all our money is. Because when you go to a store, you don't want to go to the store with eight cents and say, oh, I want to buy this Lego set. They'll be like, mm, girl, you need a lot more than that to buy that Lego set. So that's why we need to learn right now. I know a lot of you like nice things because I see you guys in school. So we need to learn the value so that you go to the store and you say, okay, here you go. Here's $15. I want to buy this Lego toy. Probably you may be able to buy it with $15, okay, but not 15 cents or not 12 cents or eight cents or seven cents. So this is our social studies lesson for the day. Tomorrow or no, I'm sorry, not tomorrow, the following day, um, not um, Wednesday, but Thursday, you will be having your very own project with counting the coins and putting together what items you think you can buy, okay? All right, well, boys and girls, that concludes our lesson and our school day for today. It's really quick. All right, well, good job. Again, I'm super proud of you. <clears throat> My allergies are like crazy today, so I apologize for the nasally voice, but I hope you had a great day. Again, I'm, I miss you more and more every day, and I think about you guys every day, and I hope that your families are fine, and I can't wait to see you guys, okay? All right, have a great, great rest of your day. Bye.